What up? It's Wally the Sensei. Make sure you check me out on the Bootleg Kev podcast, man. Real fire going on. Hey, what up, man? Before we start the interview, want to shout out to Imperial Extraction. Look, man, they got these two gram THCA diamond loaded pre rolls and uh, so much more. They got the carts, they got everything going down, and you can get 20% off right now if you go to Imperial Extraction. Dot com. That's imperialextraction.com, but you got to use the promo code BOOTLEG20. This that Yoda OG. Premium, 20% off, sent right to your door. THCA diamond loaded pre-rolls and so much more. Imperialextraction.com, promo code BOOTLEG20. Let's get to the interview. Yo, man, BOOTLEG Kev Podcast. We got a special guest in here, finally. One of my favorite out the city, man, Wally the Sensei. The golden child is here. Hey, man. Say, man. What up, Kev? What's up, man? How you doing, bro? Man, I'm good. You feel me? Hey, shout out to Kev, though, because I just came down here. He got a dope studio. I went in there and made some straight hit records. Y'all gonna hear them motherfuckers. I'm finna switch it up. No, you got... It's crazy, because you were playing me, even besides the stuff you made the other day, like, you were just playing me just the stuff that's in the... Uh, that you have just loaded up ready that's crazy with everyone and their mom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got some in the vault. I'm just sitting you got back some sh- for sure. I'm That's just putting sitting it back aiming. Like, I'm just sitting back aiming. Well, it's crazy too because like the one thing about you, bro, is like it's like I remember the first time I heard Scandalous, I was like, oh, this shit is different. Like the thing about you know, and this is something I feel like Greedo preaches so much is like it's easy to try to box in L.A. rappers into this little box. Yeah, and. You immediately did such a great job of just like when I heard Scandalous, I just like I was like, oh shit, this this ain't the same. This is different. Yeah, facts. Man, we hate it. We hate being put in a box, especially the ones that's really talented. Like, uh, like even even me though, when I came out, I had a hard time trying to um trying to locate my specific sound. Like, all yep. right, what's where, where's my foundation? Like, mm-hmm. like people know that they can come to me for you know what I'm saying that sound like that. But when you hear O3 flow or Tarzan, like all my records sound different. That's for what sure. I, I like that, but it's like a gift and a curse because you don't really know what you're gonna get when, <laughs> right, whenever I drop. Right. And you were playing me some sh- and like, you know, I feel like you just got a very like you got a range of tones that your voice can go in where like you said, like if you if if you didn't know it was you and maybe you had only heard O3 flow and maybe you heard another yeah, record, you wouldn't even you know. might not even know it's the same guy. I swear to God, crazy. But that's, I think that's a good thing. Yeah, it's good. Sometimes it's bad for me, I, I feel like, because I, I see all these other artists and they got like a foundation mm-hmm. and it's like, I kind of want that for myself, but at the same time, I don't want to be boxed into a specific sound, so. Well, I think you got a foundation though, because I think when you have like, you know, records that are, you know, whatever level, you got a couple of hit records, you know, I feel like that. You know, whether it's a, a West Coast hit or whatever, you got records that, I mean, like I booked you at my club in Scottsdale and that shit was f-ing lit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 1111. And before you even did, de- like when I would DJ at my spot, I would always play O3 Flow and the whole f-ing crowd would just sing it. Bro, people love that song. It's crazy, like, bro. They, they got like an emotional connection to that song. For sure. And when I made it, I didn't think that like everybody would be able to relate to it like that. Yeah, it's interesting too because when you made it, Greedo was incarcerated. Yep, he was in the pen. Did you have any relationship with him prior to him being incarcerated? Um, well, I had reached out to him before he went to jail. Mm-hmm. And and that's kind of why I always fucked with Greedo. Like, because I didn't even really have no songs out. Like, and he was still willing to fuck with me. Like, you know what I'm saying? I ain't going to say under what circumstances or what price or whatever, but... Like, you know what I'm saying? He could have just ignored my DM or he could have just ignored my email, whatever the case may be. And when he was in jail, I spoke to him like a couple times over the phone and he just used to give a nigga game, like giving me game about the industry and how I should move. But he didn't need to. Yeah, exactly. And he still do though. Like, like anytime me and Greedo link up or we talk, like bro, he always dropping gems on me, like showing me the way which, you know, in this industry, a lot of people ain't going to do. You got to pay to play. No, he's one of the realest, like, I like, what I like about Greedo is he's, um, he understands his worth and he understands his position and he doesn't take it lightly. I think a lot of people, 
They get some. They get some motion here. Let me push this back. I'm gonna fall off. Let me help you out here. There you go. Yeah. There we go. Good uh, looking. Oh, this fucking Velcro is tripping. Jesus. There it goes. Um. But I feel like a lot of people might get some motion. Like, obviously, Greedo is one of the most influential rappers to ever come out of Cali. But I feel like they don't they don't um, understand like the weight that they hold. And I feel like Greedo is very intentional with who he fucks with. I feel like he's 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 a pure hearted dude, and he's also like not as accessible as everybody else. And yeah, I feel facts. like that's by design. He, he on his superstar. For sure, but it's smart because you can't just be accessible to everybody. You know what I mean? Like you, you have to kind of understand, like yo, like everything's gonna be kind of intentional. And I feel like he's done a good job of that. So I think it's dope that like even without you having music out and you getting locked up, and I'm sure he he's hearing about O3 Flow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Me and Greedo, we got so much. We got a we got a whole tape on the way. Yeah, I heard him talking about it. Yeah, when he was in the halfway house in Houston, I flew out there, and we. Went all night on some shit. Fire. Made some shit that's going to LA streets up. Like, even more parts of the world, but that was really one of my focuses. Like, man, we need some of that, some of that shit that, that people love here because I feel like, you know what I'm saying, we don't really got that. Not right now. 100%, man. 100%. I feel like LA is in need of, like, some anthems right now. Yeah. Because I think, obviously, shout out to 310 Baby Soak City's going crazy, but the shit you was playing me? Man, listen. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Shout out to three one zero baby man. Now that, he's going fucking hey, crazy. Hey, that young dude, he killing he's it. He's hilarious. He's a good kid. <laughs> I love seeing that nigga man. He killing it. But yeah, the sh I got in the phone. I call it the vault. The sh I got in the vault, man. No, like special. I really plan on just going ahead and taking the throne here and picking different countries. I'm trying to get out the country with this. Sh well, you had had a. Weren't you on a major for a sec? Yeah, I was with Capital. I was That's right, Capital. For, like, for like two years. Yeah, how was that experience? Um, it was cool. I mean, I got to learn the business. Right. Because that was the main thing with me, like coming from where I'm from. I've never been up close enough to see how all this shit work. Like, it's like I know my potential and I know where I can go, but the the actual steps to getting there, I didn't know what the, what the steps was. So that kind of at least was like a nice dry run for you to be like, you know, I'm I'm in the game. I can yeah. see how this music industry works a little. You you li you live, you learn. Fast. And now, you know, now you can apply all the stuff you learned into the stuff that's in this vault. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yo, what was it like for you, man? Like, uh, I know you you told me recent, uh, well, you just told me before we were filming that, like, you did make a conscious decision to be, like, ten toes down on this music shit. Oh, yeah, because when I first came in, when I first, was, when I first started doing music... I didn't expect it to go that far. Right. Like, you I, didn't know what you had. Yeah, I really yeah. started off making music for myself. Like, I like to, I really like listening to my music. Like, I don't know if other people feel the same shit right. or, or if they hearing the same shit. But for me, it's like, it's like talking to somebody that, that everybody needs. Like, I can just talk to myself mm. through my songs. So, but once I figured it out that like people really loved it and they really fucked with it, I'm like, oh, I can probably really do this shit. And I probably, I went to Detroit. I spent like a year just in the studio almost every day. In Detroit? Yeah. Who were you working with out there? Um, with uh, The Circle. Neek. Okay. You know Neek? No, I don't. Oh, well, Neek is, is basically, he responsible for a lot of the success that come out of Detroit. Well, Detroit. Like Drago and Bino. Detroit's on fire. Like Sada and Skilla and Babyface Ray and all them niggas. They all really under... Pretty much one umbrella. Mm. So that studio, that's I was out there working with them. Oh, and the Glock Boys, TJ, I was out there working with them in the stew, like, cause they work at a fast pace. Right. Like I was making like four songs a day. Is, would you say you work at that pace too? Now I do. Yeah, now I work fast as. <laughs> but that's where it started though. I went out there, and they all used to be in the booth at once. It's like four niggas in the booth just back to back rapping and. <laughs> and um. I had to pick up on the speed, you feel me, or else I couldn't never get on the song. Right. Like every time I try to get on the song, it'd be done. So, so yeah. When I got back home, I started doing like twelve songs a day, twenty songs a day. I'm like, okay, shit. I got the hang of this. Shit. But, but probably last year, I'm like, Damn, like I feel like my music is is good. I feel like I'm one of the best. But 
I gotta get everybody else to see that, like you know, and and like real life shit always slow down the process. So I'm like, all right, f everything. I know I got the kids. I know I got family. I got people who love me, but shit, like you feel me? I gotta put everything to the side. I gotta put the hood to the side, the streets to the side, and I just gotta work on this. Yeah, I always feel like if you move a certain way while also trying to be a superstar, you're always gonna have some sort of like stress cloud hanging above your head because you never yeah. know what what's what what today might entail. Yeah, you, stress cloud, distractions. Look, if you out there and you trying to chase your dreams, bro, don't think twice. If you got the right shit in your heart and you know you love your friends, you know what I'm saying, you know you love your hood, then you don't got to think twice. Chase your dreams first and then come back. Come help, back to and it. help out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. But, but the goal isn't to stay in the hood. Yeah, it exactly. shouldn't be the goal. That's like, only know. the goal for niggas who've never been there. Right. <laughs> only niggas who ain't grow up in the hood really just glorify just being in that. We right. all trying to make a way out. Everybody from the hood trying to get out. For sure, man. Um, what is it about, man? Compton, whatever water y'all got in Compton produced the best rappers. <laughs> Bro, we got so much talent. It's so crazy. It is. Like, I'm really grateful. I swear I'm blessed because I'm grateful that I got something that stand out. Because otherwise, bro, you would be drowned in that shit. So Compton's many, <laughs> just loaded, bro. There's so many options. Like, whatever you looking for musically, sports wise, all that shit. It's a lot of talent. Tons of talent in my from neighborhood. Compton, for sure. I can get you hip. We got. Just out of my section, we got Mari Ruger, we got YS Thirty Shot Capone, we got Hit a J Three, you know, like some of the bigger names. You know, K Dot came from our section too. Um, we got Rosecrans Hop Out, we got Vicasso, we got uh, Chef Boy. I don't know if you ever heard of Chef heard Boy. Of Man, you gotta hear Chef Boy. He crazy. He got he got all the females going crazy. Yeah, I just think when I think of Compton, I'm like, you know, it's just top. I mean, you already mentioned Kendrick, obviously game fucking. Yeah, we got 448. Roddy, Asia's dope. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Roddy really one of the best artists, I feel like, ever to come out of California. I agree. Yeah, like, I don't feel like they give that dude his his respect and flowers enough. It sucks, too, because with Roddy, I feel like he was the first case study of the, like, he had caught such a wave when his album came out, and I feel like, he was the one artist who couldn't really that was his first real like superstar moment and it happened right at the beginning of covid yeah that's what happened to me <laughs> you know what i mean like covid really like roddy had a festival run planned a bigger tour planned and then covid just fucked up i feel like covid fucked with a lot of people's momentum bro covid came in bro i signed a deal during covid so that, i didn't meet nobody from the label all zoom calls everything was on zoom that shit was crazy. Like for it to be my first time doing everything. So you're dealing with nothing but Zoom. Yeah, and the record, the record uh, companies were super paranoid, so nobody was coming in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a cap on everything. It was, it wasn't too much that nobody wanted to bet on because, you know, it was our first time ever seeing it as as a whole. For sure, nah, for sure, man. Uh, talk about your what's your writing style? Are are you do you write anything or is it all? Nah, I ain't wrote since. Um, I got a song called Tarzan. Mm -hmm. Y'all make sure y'all check that out. That's Dope one record. of the people favorites. But I ain't wrote a song since Tarzan, so I ain't wrote in like two or three years. Before that, like, did, did you write Scandalous on pet? Like, no, nah, I freestyle. That, that was all freestyle. Okay. Yeah. So what will you do? Will you go in and lay down the ha harmony first, like the melody, and then it's, fill in the lyrics? It's right. so unorthodox, bro. Like, I feel like I do that more now. Like, I kind of mumble, shit, or I might even whistle. Fill it in. Yeah. Like I whistle. I whistle a whole beat through. And then, like, I'll, I'll make the whistle words. I'll fill it in with some words. But it's so unorthodox the way I do it because it ain't no... I really don't have no actual way to do it. It's no right or wrong. There's no, like, specific formula way you do it. Like, it might be different Tuesday than it is Wednesday. Yeah, like, Scandalous, I blurted that out. Like, I was in the, I was in the booth, and I just blurted some shit out. And I just kept going. Hey, such an amazing statement. Yeah, but that people that, trying to kill me for some really shit. God, some I shit did. that was going on in my right. life though. So, so that's the thing. Like a lot of times, it just really be my conscience, right? Like, and it just comes out. Yeah, and I choose conscience over brain. Like if I'm thinking, I always feel like we might, 
Like if we knew the formula, then we'll all be billionaires. Like of nobody really know the formula, so I'll be trusting my conscience whenever, whenever some shit just come out or I feel it, I just run with it. Why uh, the sensei? Um, for a few reasons. I did do karate a little bit um, growing up. Like how far in? Like how much karate? Like what belt? Brown. That's a pretty. I mean, what is that? A couple behind black. Yeah. 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 So so when you start karate, first we have to learn all the bones and in the body from the head to the feet type. Shit. Um, my my sensei was my cousin, and he ended up passing away. So after he passed away, I never did go back to karate, but um, just just the style of the word. I mean, the people that are senseis in the world. Like it's supposed to be like a, a teacher, and in my eyes, I look at it like as somebody that's that's kind of humble, mm-hmm. but but still know know a little bit. Could probably kick your ass, but they'll spare you. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, wisdom. Yeah. If you know who Riza Islam is, do you know who that is? Mm-mm. Riza Islam. Mm-mm. He um they always be taking his Instagram down, but he like next up under Farrakhan. Okay. And he be on Instagram like just. Kicking jewels about the world and, and political shit. But but when I was younger, he famous as shit now, but when I was younger, I used to run into him all the time. Like just when I used to be running the streets, and he used to like just grab me and be like, you know, you, you finna come with me. He'd take me to his, he had like a, a compound, like where they have kids read. And the like you and... could probably learn self defense, all right. type of shit. Right, not right, even right. just like, not even just on a Muslim level, but just. Like just really just enlightening young people. Because For sure. He I, I could tell he looked at me like I was quite mischievous or whatever. But he seen something else in me. So um I kind of stuck with the shit that he used to teach me, the shit that my cousin used to teach me, and just the shit that I naturally the ways that I naturally was. Well, because you seem like a pretty like reserved, out the way dude. For being like one of the hottest dudes in the city. Like I feel like you're you're not like I never ever see you like being reckless online, like you're pretty chill. Nah, nah, bro. If it was up to me, I would never get on Instagram. I I do not f- with social media, bro. Social media is crazy. It is, man. You, bro, you open your phone, it's addictive, and too. you look at this, shit and you just see a billion people trying to say the worst thing they could possibly say yeah. to anybody. To just try to, to get attention. Yeah, to people that they don't know. Yeah. And then the shit that that people do for the clout, like like. Like where I'm from is like a real place. Like, like in my hood in Bompton, it's it's weird seeing some of these people that I might have knew my whole life, and I see them like stepping out of character for likes for the internet. So it's like that not, shit scared. Uh, not me. a real place, bro. It scared the shit out of me. I hate it, and I already know that. Like you could be you could be the most talented person in the world, bro. Michael Jackson get clowned on the internet. Everybody, like you feel what I'm saying. So I know one day I might slip and fall down the stairs. And y'all gonna y'all gonna flame me for it anyway. Gonna fucking, you're gonna be a meme. <laughs> I ain't y'all, man. I don't fuck with the internet, man. Yeah, I feel like uh, you know, it's 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 a tool to use for your fans. It's a tool to use for the music, but like a lot of people get tied up with their quote unquote internet, like who, who they are online, yeah, and, and who, who they are in real, real life. life, yeah. And then they try to somehow. Like you, like you said, you'll know somebody their entire life, and if they get a little traction online, somehow they become like, like, yeah, why are you a weirdo now? Yeah, they'll run with it, and I hate that. Shit. Yeah, it's, it's, I, it's I hate it. Crazy. I hate it. Shout out to Instagram. I love what y'all are doing with the app, but it's the people that I'm talking about. The people using the app, right? It, it's it's we could be using it in a lot of positive ways, like because bro, the internet is a blessing. Yeah, you can spread information. Like bro, like spread even, positivity. even in music, if you think about it, like people used to have to put million dollar budgets down for videos. You, used, and, you would have had to have taken a demo tape to someone yeah. and say, "Yo, check this out." And they gotta play it. And then they gotta play it. They gotta like it. They gotta call you back. No, now you could just go straight to the people. Yeah. And then they'll tell everybody. Bro, the you market. could sell anything. You could do, but what we choose to do with it is crazy. It's wild, bro. Like it's we, like the be- the best and worst thing to ever happen to society. Yeah, facts. <laughs> For sure. Um, why talk to me about your situation because, you know, like you said, like you got a ton of music, you're sitting on some big records. Like what is holding you back from dropping more music? 
um since December, I've been I was dropping like a single every week. Mm-hmm. And I just finally slowed down so I can kind of calculate my next few steps. Just but re- just being independent, it's not like it's easier, it's a faster process because I don't gotta get the records cleared the same as Right. But at the same time, financially, you know what I'm saying? Everything falls on you. Yeah, certain shit, you gotta be able to back certain records up. Yeah. So so the ones that I really care about, I ain't just throwing them out. You just there. wanna throw out and see what happens. You wanna make sure you have a plan, you wanna make yeah. sure you have but the ones that I feel like is just good for the people and, and just to hold them just over. Just to keep keep the I fly. Yeah. Yeah, like like how many records you and Greedo have on the project because um, he's we talked got, about it. At least, we probably got like 10 to 12. No, that'd be hard. Yeah, man. We got some shit too. Some dope. Bro. I got to play you some when, we, For when sure. we get up out of here. For sure. All right. We got to stop the interview to tell you about the good folks at my bookie, man. Now, look. NBA playoffs are approaching. Whew. March Madness is in full effect. What are we talking about? Get in on the action at mybookie.ag. That's right. All right. If you want to bet on who you think is going to, um, you know, win the national championship in basketball, college basketball, on the women's side, on the men's side, man, so many specials going on. Go to mybookie.ag right now. Sign up for a new account, and they're going to get you hooked up with that first deposit bonus when you use the promo code bootleg. That's right. Mybookie.ag. Use the promo code bootleg. Sign up for a new account, and you're going to get a first deposit bonus up to $1,000. What are we talking about? Playoff basketball, March Madness. People are playing hockey. I don't know why. Terrible sport to watch. Baseball season is approaching. Let's f- get it, boys. Let's throw some action in. Let's get in on that action. Let's get a little taste in there. Plus the full service casino. Man, blackjack, craps, f- roulette, whatever the f- you want to play, they got it at my bookie. Promo code bootleg. Sign up for a new account. Thank me later when you get in all that money. You know what I'm talking about? Also, want to give a shout out. For our good folks at Odd Socks. You know, Odd Socks has a bunch of socks. I don't have any with me right now. But, you know, Cyrus is over here jerking his over here with his blue chew that he just popped. He just snorted a blue chew like a psychopath. Um, but shout out to Odd Socks, man. Look, this was dope, man. WrestleMania is coming up. I got all my wrestling socks from Odd Socks. They got the WWE license. OddSocksOfficial.com. That's right. Go to OddSocksOfficial.com. They are the most comfortable socks in the world. I just have underwear here. Yo, wait, we got drawers? No socks. We got fucking 38 drawers full of socks and Cyrus can't pull. Anyway, listen, if you've been watching the Bootleg Kev podcast in your life, bro, you just spilled my energy drink. You didn't know your energy drink was there. You got a serious cleanup job here, Cyrus. Anyway, while I'm getting bombarded with socks, if you've been watching the Bootleg Kev podcast, we love odd socks. They're our family. And when I tell you I only wear odd socks, like, like I'm about to take the sock off of my foot right now. Ugh. This is an odd socks basic. You see that? I'm barefoot right now. The most comfortable sock in the world. I invite everybody, just f- throwing sh- like a psychopath, bro. I invite everybody to go to oddsocksofficial.com and participate in a level of comfort you did not know existed before. All right? So go to oddsocksofficial.com, use the promo code bootleg. Save 20% at checkout. I suggest you get you some wrestling socks, get you some uh, some Transformer socks, maybe some half-baked socks. Yeah, let's get back to the interview. I heard some sh- I want to say who's on these records, but you got some records. You got some big records. Oh, uh, yeah, I got some sh- right now. I got some sh- um, I got some sh- with Doughboy, G Herbo, YTB Fats just came out. Yesterday, another another talented. Uh, yeah, he just came to the hood yesterday. Well, we went to I, the studio. Say, you, play, you played me a song with another guy who's from LA, who also is a little reserved online, but is also great with melodies. Oh yeah, I got some. Sh- the one with, I got one with Ty Dolla Sign and Blast. Yes, that's the one I'm talking about. The Ty Dolla Sign Blast record is f- crazy. That's sh- so far, hey, shout out to Ty, shout out to Blast, because they sent them verses back, and I was. Bro, I felt like that was what we needed right now. For sure. And the tie tie on there, it sound like some because I'm a, I'm a big tie fan. For sure. You feel me? One so of the goats. so all his old work is really some sh- that that kind of help. You know, because I do harmonies and, sh- and I be singing. Yeah. So that's somebody I always look to. You know what I'm saying? To not be mm-hmm. kind of him and Greedo. Mm-hmm. Greedo, Ty, and no R Kelly. R Kelly, the goat man. Aside from the from the other. Sh- I say it all the time. Musically, people always bro, give me shit R. Kelly is I still be f- go. Listen, you have to separate the p- 
person from the art. Otherwise, we ain't going to ever enjoy shit. Because <laughs> as you can see what the fuck's been going on lately is a lot of our heroes is caught up in some allegations. And it's like, well, does that mean I can't enjoy their contributions? Because yeah. R. Kelly is, the, in my opinion, the best songwriter ever. The greatest, And bro. he's, the, in my opinion, the Stepping king of R&B. The love, happy people, bro. He, he the shit. Well played. The R album, the double album was my shit. Like R. Kelly, the self-titled album, you remind me, all that. Like R. Kelly is like still to this day, like one of my favorite artists. Now, I'm speaking from his creative contributions. Like I can look the other way on the other shit. Yeah. It's all good. Like I I'm yeah. kicking it with him. Yeah, I mean, I ain't no judge. I can't convict him of nothing. No, he got convicted though. Someone but but if it was up to us, <laughs> we we couldn't. Even no, right, 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 right. We couldn't if no, we wanted to. No, but you can to. enjoy the art. But the music, bro, and then Ty really like looking at Ty work was kind of like, like okay, if I want to be real big, can I still be myself? Like mm -hmm. Greedo and Ty, they're still. Themselves. I feel like those two people musically, they really bring like they put the inside. Onto the track, like when did you just, first reach out to Ty, or did he reach out to you? How'd that work? Um, because he's tapped in a lot with the with the new. But we got more records that's good as you too. and Ty. Yeah, we got some dope records. We probably our first session we did was probably um, last year. Fire, the beginning of last Great year. Great guy. And we got some dope records. Like I put up on him one another time and and did some dope. Shit. He had Juicy J in there, of course. Um, I done put up. I don't. I just met uh, Eminem. What? Dr. Dre and Snoop. I went to Dre house for a day, and I got to sit in a session and watch them work, bro. That was the, bro. That was the dopest I ever seen. Boy, you gotta rewind. You get invited to go to Dr. Dre's house. Yeah. And Eminem and Snoop are there with yeah. Dre, bro. And then look, look. Put your hand out. Yeah. <laughs> when I when I met him, he like Marshall. Like, yeah, I'm no. like, bro, I know, I know who you is, bro. You <laughs> yeah. one of the, one of the best rappers ever. But um, bro, now I understand why they call Dre Dr. Dre. Like the shit that he do in the studio, like he really doctored them songs up. Yeah, they say he's like super particular. Every line, bro. And then like it it get deep, bro. He he one of the coldest. He might be the coldest to do it. Like I mean, if you think about production, if you think about just what he has had his fingerprints on, even just the Dr. Dre tree. If you yeah. just like take his tree and you just start looking at everything that came from it. Yeah, and then we from the same neighborhood too as well. That's crazy. And I didn't even know that at first until we got to sit down and chop it up. How did you get the invite? Um, because one of my homies, my homie Money, mm -hmm. um, he they related to Dre. And, um, you know, since I got buzzing, I've been having the city rocking. For sure. For for a for few minute, years yeah, now, few so years sure. so he so he like man, I gotta get you over there. Um, him and Jay West put it together, and I linked up with him one day, and we went over there. I fell asleep. Dre house so comfortable, bro. I fell asleep for like for hours. That's crazy. So you get in the studio, just like Dre be like, hey, what's up? Do you be like, hey, we're from the same area, man? Like he a real dope dude, bro. Like like did he have Air Force Ones on? Yeah. Yeah. All white. All white always. He's, yeah. like he's got like a thousand pairs in his and, closet. And um, you would think that, uh, like, you know, some of these people, because they're a little older than us, but he hip. Like, he's still in tune sure. with what's going on. He's serious about the music, though. So if you playing with this music, don't waste my if, time. Yeah, if you ain't ready, then don't even, don't, don't even, come over in, here yeah, and don't even serious, introduce yourself to Trey, because he ain't going to with it. If, if, if you serious and you got some going on, then I feel like. I feel like he was supported. What was it? What were, what what did it like? How dope was the shit that Snoop, Dre, and M were working on? Bro, that shit was cold. They was working on like the last couple songs of um of an album. I don't know if it was Snoop album, but but Dre he really real particular with these bars and. Shit. I don't know if you seen when he got his star. I saw that and, it happened and, uh, like last week. Yeah, and yeah. Then you seen when Snoop gave the speech? And he I didn't watch like, the speech, but I oh, saw he, he gave did a the speech, speech and he rapped and he was like, "You still make me do every line a thousand motherfucking times." He wasn't capping. So that was because because your session was what a few weeks ago. You said no when I went over there. Yeah. That was that was probably like six months ago. Or, That's crazy. Yeah, Snoop, bro, Snoop. Dre got awards everywhere. I mean, he got them all. Diamond Awards, Grammys, all that shit. So just seeing it, bro, I had to see that. Snoop's the coolest 
ever too. Yeah, Snoop hella cool. Snoop's the kind of guy you meet and he doesn't disappoint. Like you know how like you meet some famous fools that like you grew up like <laughs> you grew up listening to and then you meet him. Like I thought, I got this fool. Exactly, shit. Snoop's getting, exactly who you yeah, hoped he'd be. You getting exactly what you thought meeting Snoop, bro. Snoop a f- legend. All them dudes is legends. Snoop, M, Dre. I'm I'm grateful to even be in that session. That's legend. And hopefully one day I can be like them. Did you cut any vocals with them? No, nah, they was working the whole time. So you time. were just observing. Yeah, yeah. I was just observing. Fly on the wall. Watching how they working. That's so crazy. I can learn how to apply it to myself. And then um I know when I'm ready. It'll happen. You know what I'm saying? But I met I met me being there led me to meeting the dopest producer in the world. Who? His name is Joints. Oh, he's hard. Bro, Joints, he made the tie and blast record. He's hard. Bro, he cold using live instruments. Mm-hmm. Like it ain't nothing that dude can't do. Like nah, d- joints is fire. Real wild child for sure. Yeah. So are you right now? You're are you looking for a new situation to put out? Like this tie and blast record is a f- smash. It's not yeah. the type of record you just drop and hope for the best. Nah, yeah, you, you got to have ducks in a row. You got to do it right. Yeah, um, we got some shit in the works. I am open to new conversations though. Um, anybody who feel like they can give the record the potential that it need. Have any other artists tried to sign you? Artists? Like, you know, there's artists with imprints. Has anybody tried to be like, yo, come over here, you know, rock? Um, shout out to shout out to my bro Zona Man. Um, in future. Um, I go do a like a session with, with free bands. I, I ended up just becoming family. Like, that's my that's my southern family and shout Midwest family. Yeah. Yeah, future. He, I mean, shit. Joe Moses was shit. free, free band. I think. Yeah, Joe Moses was over there with future. Yep, yep. He f- with future heavy, but yeah. So far, that's like the only person that I that I really like latched on to. Right. Would you do another major label thing, or did, or did you kind of experience that? I want. And... I want five M's. At least five M's. That's a serious bag. Yeah. If 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 it ain't five M's, then probably not. Then you're gonna just kind of do. Do it your I'm gonna way. I'm going to shoot my shot because you heard what I got. <laughs> I heard what you got. <laughs> hey, we got to stop the interview to tell you about our good folks at Blue Chew, baby. Everybody always asking me, does Blue Chew work? Yes, it'll have your hard. That's uh, super hard. Uh, anyway, um, so look, if you want to find out if Blue Chew works, trust me when I tell you. It's amazing. If you're dealing with erectile dysfunction, if you're dealing with maybe some stress at work and you're not performing in bed with your lady, whatever it is, man, all you got to do is go to bluechew.com right now. Use the promo code bootleg and they're going to send you a month supply for free. So don't take my word for it. They're just going to send you a month supply for free when you use the promo code bootleg at bluechew.com. Now, bluechew, if y'all don't know, it's the same active ingredient as Viagra and Cialis, but it's in a chewable form. And it gets delivered right to your doorstep in discreet packaging. The best thing about Blue Chew is this, right? Blue Chew, you don't have to worry about going to no doctor's appointments. You don't got to worry about none of that. It's all online. It's not. It's all virtual. It's all online. It's all handled at BlueChew.com. So use that promo code bootleg right now. Get uh, a month for free. Uh, and uh, your d- could be as hard as ever. Yes. And nobody, uh, well, nobody enjoys a hard d- like Cyrus, my producer right here. Uh, speaking of that, hey, can we give a shout out to King Palm? Oh my God, look at all this King Palm we have here. Jesus. This is why I love King Palm. Whatever you're into, they got for you. First of all, King Palm, 100% organic. All right? It's the world's best smokable leaf. Yes, flavors on flavors on flavors. Of course, here we've got our banana cream. Um, what's dope about these is they're filled with the terpene, no tobacco, no nicotine. Uh, you squeeze the tip, you get hit with some of that uh, banana cream flavor. Uh, they also got the natural joints right here. How about this? If you're into the uh, more uh, harsh tobacco leaf smoking, there we go. They got the tobacco leaf cones, banana cream, strawberry kiwi, just the natural sweet. Whatever you're into, what I'm trying to tell you is King Palms got it at the highest level, at the most natural level. At the best smokeability level. And right now, you can save 50% off. It's 50, right? Yeah, it's half off. If you go to King Palm right now, kingpalm.com, use the promo code bootleg, you'll get half off. Or you could just go to your local smoke shop, your local 7 Eleven, and get you some King Palms. Let's get back to the interview. I, I, I'm good right now. As long as I can just keep doing it the way I love to do it, I'm not tripping. I mean, 
I feel like I feel like what I bring to the world musically is deeper than just you know money or or whatever deal I can get. I actually. I feel good about what I give people to listen to. I know you're super tight with Buddy, who is a, another guy. I just ran into him at uh, Rolling Loud, but he's another guy that is just a prolific MC. Yeah, one of the dopest. My twin, shout out to Buddy. He just had an album release. Like two days ago, I went. Yeah, I saw. I, saw, I think he's got a show tonight, actually. Um, For real, where at? I think it's tonight. Yeah, I got to pull up, man. <laughs> I got to pull up on bro. But I was going to say, like, is there any other artists in L.A. that, you know, outside of Greedo that you could see yourself collaborating with on a full project? Yeah. Yeah, my bro, Kalen real. Shout out to Kalen. Um, oh, think, that'd be crazy. Yeah, I think me and Kalen will have a good if, album. There's something about San Diego that loves both of you guys. If you guys do a f joint album, do the release party in San Diego, because every bad b in San Diego will go San there. Diego and San Diego Arizona, bro. with y'all, bro. And, and AZ. <laughs> and AZ, for sure. Then my hot spots right there, mm -hmm. man. Um... But me and Kalen, I would love to do one with Blast. I feel like I feel like that'd be good too that'd for the fine. ladies and for the for the streets. Um, Kalen, Blast, of course, Bino. Um, who else? I I would from here or from anywhere? From anywhere. Oh, shit, it's a lot. It's a lot. Like I would love to do a, a mixtape with Mozzie. That'd be crazy. On BPZ. Me and Mozzie and On BPZ just dropped a single probably like five Shout days ago. Shout out to PZ, man. PZ's yeah. a great, great guy. The single out is called I'm Good. We just dropped a single. Um, but it's a lot of niggas. I got a homie in uh, St. Louis. His name MB's. Fire. Bro, he hard as shit. All right, check him out. Nobody really know about him yet. But St. Louis I, is bubbling, man. Sexy feel, Ray going crazy. Oh, and Alexis. Alexis? Bro, me and Alexis going to the world up. Shout out to Alexis, man. We trying to fill up arenas. Yeah, I got some. Yeah, I heard this you guys cut the other day. This shit's crazy. Yeah. For sure. Stupid. G Perico. I G Perico. G Perico That's making dog, a whole man. tape. Yep. Um, I got a tape with Jakai, my bro Jakai. He out the village. I think he just um signed with Lil Bibby or 10, not 10K. It's 10K. 8 plus. Uh, I don't know. Bro, all these random companies these days. I don't Something know. like that. But he, he with Lil Bibby, Jakai Cole, he one of the codes. Nah, Bibby going crazy though as an executive for sure. Um, Travis Scott. That'd be hard. I would want to do it. You and Roddy would be tough. That'd be so hard, bro. Big for Compton. Bro, that'd be so hard. Yeah. And that then and then Roddy, another person that I always look to as well, musically, like, because our like what I was doing when I was listening to his music, like before I started doing music, a lot of shit that he rapped about was that I was just my everyday life, like. The age is so our age is so close. Right. Like a lot of other artists I couldn't relate to the same, but since we so close in age, it was like, you know what I'm saying? Like this my shit right here. <laughs> For you, was there a catalyst that, you know, I feel like everybody, you know, we talked earlier, you kind of had made the decision to go all in on the music, but was there something that happened that like kind of made you realize like I might be able to I might lose this shit if I don't take it serious for real? Um, yeah. Uh, all my closest friends was like really my grandma my grandma passed away my bro Nebula Swavy Earl Swavy Tiny West like I lost some real key factors like people that I was really doing this shit for so at some point um, I started feeling like like everybody I was doing this shit for is kind of gone so it's really like I felt like just crashing out shit. like you feel me but but, like, my big bro, Jay West, he used to always tell me, like, nigga, you need to go home. You need to go sit in the house. Like, go deal with your emotions. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, Don't be outside when you have yeah, that kind like, of shit stop in your just, mind. Stop just trying to run around and, like, you know what I'm saying? You mixing too much mm -hmm. with what you, what you got going on in your head positively. So, like, big bro, he really influenced me to get to know myself and to just deal with all the shit that. Because, bro, growing up, you might deal with a lot of shit. But not actually deal with it. You think you deal with yeah, it? Yeah, you might go through a lot of shit, bro. But just because you pick up a bottle. Yeah, and, and you, then you always got friends. Right. You always got family. You always got people around you. But sometimes you might need to sit by yourself. And just face it. And there ain't no time limit on that. Right. Like, it ain't like, oh, I stayed in the house for one day. Right. Nah. You know what I'm saying? You like, nah. Through it, fight through it. Sit in the house and really get to know yourself or go somewhere where you isolate it and really figure out what's been going on in your head and what you really care about. <laughs> Because I almost gave up, bro. I really almost gave really? up on this. Shit. 
And then I had like a switch. I'm like, nah, like what the f I'm way too close. What year was that where you almost gave up? Last year. Wow. I was like I was feeling like that from the beginning of my career, bro. Like So like, like from the beginning, even though you had all this momentum, you had all these Bro, I had momentum, crazy. but I had so much going on in my that life. That we didn't even know about. Bro, my like my personal life was just fucked up. And it was affecting how I, how I was like rubbing off on people even when mm. I meet them like I didn't really care to meet rappers or right. like I didn't really want to do fucking, business it was with nobody up the way you were approaching music too yeah because you know what I'm saying we all got our personal shit and I was I was looking at myself like nobody else could feel how I feel like dumbass shit. like right. we all we all lost somebody we all going through shit. like I was looking at it the complete wrong way and I had to self evaluate and then like if you're going through all of that and you don't deal with it the other problem is you start to treat everything else in your life like it's a job. So the rap shit becomes something you have to do, not something you want to do. Because exactly. Because you're so preoccupied with your trauma or your heartbreak or whatever you're going through that when you have to go to the studio, it's a chore. Because yeah. you'd rather go be on the phone and deal with whatever you're dealing with or go... You know what I'm saying? Like Facts. For sure. And then Nebula Swavey, my bro that passed away, he the one who showed me how to like use DistroKid... He knew the business well. Like, I didn't know none of this shit. Right. So, so losing him, it was kind of like, ah, oh, Like, he's kind of the reason why I know. Like, yeah, having somebody you right. could trust. Like, it ain't too many people you could trust in this business. For sure. So, having Greedo is kind of similar because, like, okay, Greedo, he always giving me the game. For sure. You feel me? But before Greedo, he wasn't home. So, me losing Nibs, um, by the way, that's, if you ever hear my song, Silly Rabbit, he the person on the second verse. Got it. But... But yeah, having him, it was like, losing him was like, I don't even know if I could find another person that I could trust because he was going to give it to me, you know what I'm saying, give me the business raw. Like, nah, you don't need him. You don't need them. You don't need to do this. Like, right. you know what I'm saying? Because you can go through a, a lot of loops, spending your money wrong, all type of shit. And then also, like, keeping the wrong people around you, It's it, it, energy is a real thing, man. Yeah, hell yeah. So if you don't even realize, like... I got I got this crew of people around me, or the, a few, uh, uh, maybe it's one person around you that you don't even realize is just adding to the the energy of the room every time, or the energy yeah. of your life. And you're like, yo, like people don't realize, like you got to make sure you got to keep your energy tight, bro, like and protect it, because otherwise it could f up, it could f up everything. No nah, facts. Um, yeah, you know, I think about Leonardo Wick, sh like that situation where he one of his happened? homies fucked up some kid who's coming up to him. Oh, I seen that. And I'm like, man, like I seen that. And the homie who did it, it wasn't even a security guard. It was just really? one of, it was just one of his people. Nah. <laughs> it just took off on this little kid. That ain't even funny, but, Bro, but, but I, I could have sworn I thought that was his security though. His security was 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 standing, it was the bigger dude. And when I saw that, I was like, that poor poor like shout out to Nardo. I met him, he's a good dude. Nice, nice guy. But like all it took was him having the wrong dude. Yeah, that was just looking That'll to take off on somebody. Up. Niggas, no, nah, look, look. My cousin told me, shout out to Big Doby. He told me a few months ago, like, bro, you do not need an entourage. Like, as long as you are, as long as you know what, like, as long as you're not moving around in spaces where you know, like, you stay the f out stay of them, stay out the way. But when you, bro, like, it's like niggas be scared. To look like what they are. If you a superstar or if you really doing this music, it's not wrong for you to have security. For sure, come out your pocket, pay for some security, some some it's ones smart. that you can trust. It's smart, bro. Oh, and I forgot a couple people too. Shorty, shorty, that's my dog right Great there. Guy. A mixtape with Baltimore shorty, legend. shorty would be that'd be. It's so crazy how he's from Baltimore, but he's such a West Coast artist. They yeah. love him on the West Coast. Yeah, he 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 kind of changed the game for, for real. Sure. Him and Kamaya. Shout out to Kamaya. Kamaya. Shorty Shorty and Kamaya, them sounds. Like that bituary is like a yeah. f that's a West Coast classic. Yeah, that was some shit that we needed. For sure. But um Big Doby was telling me, like, bro, you don't need all these motherfuckers around you. Because I love having my homies around. Of you course. Feel me? Like, like having this as something to share, that was always idealistic to me. Like, like this shit ain't just for me. Right. I personally Bro, I could have a basketball, a skateboard, some chili cheese fries, It'd be and, and a bitch or two. <laughs> I'll probably never leave you the skate? house. You a good skater? Yeah, I do, bro, I do everything. So you could like actually like get down on a skateboard? Yeah, I can hoop, play football, I quarterback, 
baseball, skateboard. Yes, yeah, so there's some good rappers out there. That and I'm like probably the best bowler oh, in, sh- in the industry. For real? Anybody who needs that, man, get at me. I'm taking all bowling. You ever go to the Kingpin Monday? Sh- um, nope. Okay. But I bowl twice a week though. Twice a week. Yeah. Twice oh, a so week. you're really legit a bowler. Yeah, me and Savvy Third, me and Savvy Third actually planning on doing a bowling event, and um, that's fire. And bringing people out so we could take some bowling phase. Wiz is a good bowler. Oh, shout out to Wiz. I f- with dude too. Uh, I don't think nobody can f- with me on this bowling. Sh- though. I'm calling you out. Dre Sinatra can Wiz, bowl. Wiz, I'm calling you out. Savvy, I'm calling you out. Who else said they can bowl? Uh, what's what's the homie name that made? He had that hot song, uh, "Bless the Bottle." Oh, "Bless the Bottle." Whose song was that? Um, um, um. Forgive me, cause I know your you know I know your name, bro, bro. I'm just tripping right now, but he cold. But I'm calling name. him out too. Anybody who wanted in this bowling, shit, YG, Nelly. I just was in. I was in St. Louis bowling with Nelly and them a couple weeks ago. Bless the bottle, radio base in Cali State. Radio base. Yeah. He cold with the bowling, shit, but I'm calling you out, bro. There it Nelly, is. Nelly, Wiz, Savvy, Radio, YG, Mustard, all y'all niggas. I think I OT can bowl. OT, that's my big bro right there. I need that bowling fade. When he's not breaking people's shoulders in San Diego. <laughs> You know I was out there, right? <laughs> Everybody from LA was out there. We the- had did the festival. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to Chef, man. Chef Fest. That shit went up. Yeah, no, I, I I was at the club with Wiz, and I left. That's where they was at, trying to get in. So there. I was at, I was at Park with Wiz, and then uh, left, and then I got to the hotel. I woke up at like maybe five, six in the morning, or whatever, and I saw that shit on my. Profile or my page or whatever. I was like, "What? The, when did this happen? I was there. Yeah. What the? F-? See, I was going over there, but Shorty Shorty had some. Sh- he was at on. the Owl, so I had stopped there first. Yeah. And by the time I left from where where Shorty sh- was at, that shit had already <laughs> happened. Shout out to AD man. Shout, shout out to AD man. Great shout guy. Out to AD. Shout out to T Real. Shout out to uh, sh- all Back the homies that yeah, all here. the homies that's doing their podcast shit. Because, Killing it. Because them, them niggas be looking... All y'all be looking out for me. Like, for sure. You know what I'm saying? Nah, those, those are great guys. That. AD's a great guy, man. Shout out to him and Pun and, uh, and OT. I, I, I had them come to my pizza shop opening, and I just told AD, I'm like, yo, keep your f- shirt on tonight. Yeah. So, you know, like, a lot of these dudes, I knew, like, before I did music. You right. You feel me? So, now that I'm doing something positive, it's like a full circle moment. Like, Desto Dub. Like, bro... Love Dub, man. Bro, Desto tatted my whole chest when I was 18. Really? Yeah, yeah. Desto, he was the man with the tattoo gun. No, I know he did tattoos, so he yeah. gave you... He blasted you when yeah, you were 18. he blasted my chest when I was 18. AD brother, I, me and AD brother fit. We was actually uh, real close. Um, okay. Before he ended up going to jail. He got out now. He doing like gospel rap and shit. He dope. That's dope, man. But yeah, so it, it be like full circle moments that I, that I love. Like, I met Joe Moses... At AD Brother House, probably when I was like, like fourteen. F- crazy. So when you were you a kid, I mean? you met Joe Moses. Yeah, yeah. I, you well, you know they always talk about how like Joe Moses and AD like they've known each other since like AD was a f- kid essentially. Yeah, no, that's f- so that's dope, man. Shout out to Joe. Well, like listen. all the people that you see me f- with, most of the time I knew them. Like Savvy Third, mm-hmm. like me and Bro stayed like next door to each other basically when crazy. I stayed in Long Beach. Savvy's hard. So it's like all this is just it's like. I didn't know what I was doing when I was just running the streets, but it all ended up making a sense. Making sense. Like, Full circle. Yeah. Well, look, you got a ton of music on the way. Um, like you said, you just dropped a Mozzie. Who else was on that record? You said Mozzie and On Peasy. On Peasy. That's right. Yep. I got one that's out with them joints. It's called Bondage. Um, I got Brighter Days out. Guidance out. I got I Swear out. I got a tr- I got a song called You See. That's really like the new summer anthem right now. You gotta check that shit out. And tons of music on the way with Hell yeah. some of the biggest artists on the planet. Facts. Big records coming, man. Appreciate you pulling up. We're gonna do a little freestyle too, so you'll be able to check that out, man. Wally the Sensei, appreciate you, brother. Let's get it. Yes, sir. Fire. Wanna shout out to Hardeen, man. Hey, don't forget, this interview was brought to you by Hardeen. And when you're hitting Las Vegas, you gotta stop off at Hardeen. Tell the Uber driver, the taxi driver, take me to Hardeen. They're going to take you. They're going to get you right. You know what I'm saying? Make sure you go visit them at uh, HardeenLasVegas.com. Go follow them, Hardeen underscore Las Vegas. And when you go and check out the most craziest premium selection of cannabis in the world, um, 
Make sure I saw you tell them I sent you. They're going to get you situated. Salute to Hardeen. Thank you for watching.